Hey, what's up guys? This is Larry B. Uh, I wanted to go over some uh, basic instructions for RetroPie here. Um, basically, I want to show how I set up a game controller like this to use the analog stick in these games. And I'd also like to show how I change button layouts in those games. Um, now, there's probably other ways to do this. As a matter of fact, I know there are. Some of them are a little more complicated, some that are a little more all-encompassing. Um, but this is how I do it. Um, so first off, uh, load up a emulator. This is going to be done per emulator. In other words, you have to do it for Super Nintendo, Nintendo, Sega, and all that other stuff. Um, some of them, it, this may or may not work in, uh, I, I, you know, some of the arcade ones are a little finicky. Uh, Amiga might have its own little quirks too. Um, but this will work with all your, your Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, stuff like that. Um, for some of them, you know, you might be on your own. Uh, for me, I tend to mainly only mess with the 8 and 16-bit systems. Um, so, what you're going to want to do first is come over here and you want to press uh, sl sl uh, select and then the top button here, which is your X on a Nintendo controller. Um, now, if you set up a certain key for the menu, uh, you might have to do a different uh, input there. For me, I don't do that, so I use select and then uh, the top button there. Uh, you want to go to your quick menu here and uh, select the quick menu. Uh, from there, you're going to want to come down to controls. All right, so you're going to see this here. Um, now, at default, right there, it says none. Okay, so that's uh, user one analog to digital. Uh, what you want to do is come over here and select, change that to left analog stick. Now, you can also change that to right if for some reason you want to. I'm not sure why you would. Okay, so that should basically uh, set that up for this particular emulator. Um, now, I, I don't remember, but you might have to come over here and save uh, save core remap file or game. You can even save per, for the entire core uh, or each individual game. Uh, so I'd probably come save core remap file back out of there and then uh, come down and maybe even save core overrides. Okay, so that, that should get your analog stick uh, working in any emulator that you do this in. Um, now, the next thing is how you set up the controls. Uh, by default, the way this is going to be set up, it should pretty much emulate one for one on the uh, Super Nintendo button layout. Um, you know, once again, the Xbox controller is half ass backwards. Actually, I do have a custom <laughs> Xbox controller with the Super Nintendo layout, but it doesn't have Bluetooth. It's like right before they did it. Um, but that's kind of like the layout of the Super Nintendo controller. <clears throat> so in order to change those buttons around what you want to do is you come down here and this is where you can change buttons uh, it can be kind of confusing um, the best I can suggest is trial and error uh, hold on let me back out of this into something different and show you what my Nintendo looks like uh, I can't really promise that this will work on yours it may or may not but uh, for Nintendo here's one that I had to uh, adjust um, and the way I do that is uh, pretty much I like well <laughs> I just like I make a little like list man and I kind of like write some button layouts and write where I want to move stuff around and it, it can be really confusing um, but generally you only need to do like one layout per system uh, you might want to do some alternates like Nintendo like if you ever have one of those Nintendo games that reverses the layout they like reverse the layout compared to Mario you might want to do, uh, you know, your basic Mario layout and then do another one for those oddball games. Um, so come here, quick menu, go down to controls. Uh, as you can see, I've already had the left analog stick set up. And you can see I've actually changed some of these buttons around to where user B is Y. And then uh, <clears throat> let's see, user A is B. And, you know, so you're just going to have to kind of figure that out. It's confusing. It's a pain in the butt. Um, but it, it's just part of doing this and it's, you know, if you want to optimize your, your button layout, um, once you've done that, you can come and save core remap file. Uh, once again, you can also save per game. Um, then if you want to load a, a remap file, you can come here and load a remap file. Um, once again, make sure to back up everything before doing this because all, all this shit can be really, um, I don't know. It just can be really finicky and it's easy to screw shit up. All right. Um, one other thing I'll show while we're here is shaders. 
you can actually uh, set up little various shaders. So that's going to give you effects. Uh, let's see. So we come here. We're in the quick menu. menu we go down to shaders and we go to load, load shader presets. Um, and let's say CRT. It's a CRT pie right here. Load this, right? Apply changes. Now this should give us a shader of a CRT. Uh, now, if you wanted to save this, to always do that. You could do save core overrides. Uh, but let's go back up to resume. And now we actually have a little uh, CRT effect going on, uh, which in my opinion, actually, I, I kind of like. Um, now that can be done in other, in, uh, other menus. Um, I forget how to do that. It's been a while since I've really messed with it. Um, but basically, this is just some very simple, basic adjustments uh, that you can do to kind of kind of better optimize or customize uh, retro pie to your own your own you know your own particular uh, needs <laughs> um, but you know man that's really all I have uh, if, you, if you enjoyed this video like comment and subscribe uh, I don't really do much on retro pie maybe if I uh, you know see if someone has questions I'll make a video for it uh, other than that guys that's really all I have uh, thanks good luck and uh, peace